Before I get started, first thing I just want to say is I finished second place overall, second place in individual bolt gun division. So I did get beat, but uh, I thought I performed pretty well at the match. I always just think it's important as we're uh, pulling in information online to kind of look at how the people you're getting information from actually perform because there's a lot of trash out here on the internet and I found match scores is a decent way to figure out who you should be listening to you and who you shouldn't. So just wanted to kind of get that out of the way first. The first thing I want to start off with is traveling, going to a match, that sort of thing. Um, I'm a big checklist guy. I have a lot of checklists for all the gear I need to bring, pre-stage checklists, pre-match checklist, you've arrived at the match checklist. Um, and so I like to be organized because the worst thing that can happen is they're telling you you're the on-deck shooter and you just realize, oh, something's in the car or where is it, can't find it, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to just run you through real quick, kind of travel, that kind of thing. I'm a big fan of these DeWalt toolboxes. Um, I just have this one up here with me, but I have their whole system, and I basically found I can put everything I need for a major match, other than your big stuff like tripods, rifles, that sort of thing, um, into these boxes. It's a great way to stay organized, and I promise you, being organized will help you perform. Um, as far as traveling with a rifle, a lot of guys like big Pelican cases, that sort of thing. Uh, I've used those. I get tired of lugging them around. They're big, they're heavy. When you end up on a multiple flights up a stair hotel room like we did, uh, it's nice not to have to lug those. So I'm a big fan of this Air Armor case uh, it cover. It's basically an inflatable cover that wraps around your gun, protects the scope, obviously the most important part. That's how I use travel in the matches. Um, staying safe at matches is always important. So that's why I bring a uh, full auto Uzi. I found that's a uh, perfect little, you know, hotel self-defense option, that kind of thing. Um, then the last thing I'm going to touch on organization-wise, these DACA pouches, DACA, DACA, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, from Magpul. Uh, they're awesome, uh, great for organizing all sorts of different stuff. Um, there's a million different cheaper ways you can do this. You can go buy cheap stuff sacks from Walmart that will accomplish the same thing. Uh, but long story short, I like having stuff organized, and that's just kind of a uh, quick intro into heading to the match and just wanted to reinforce the importance of being organized before you go to that match. The first thing that probably comes to most people's mind when you think of shooting competitions is guns. So I want to give you a rundown on the firearms I used and what I thought about them, how they work, that sort of thing. So starting with my handgun, uh, I shot a CZ Shadow 2 um, with a Trigicon SRO. And what I'll say about this is for the long movement, this was definitely a gun that was on the heavy side to carry. Uh, but the way the Tactical Game Sniper Challenge was set up is for one, you had a lot of long pistol shooting. There were targets at 40 and 50 yards. And you also had stages where you had to earn your rifle points by shooting steel with the pistol. And while those were a little closer and easier, they were what I would consider to be high value pistol targets. So for that reason, uh, I think running a gun like a Shadow 2, even though it's big, bulky, weighs a ton, um, is well worth it compared to something small and light like a Glock 19 or that sort of thing. So all in all, I ran the Shadow 2, happy that I did. As far as my rifle goes, this is a uh, Masterpiece Arms rifle, uh, completely built by them. I'll start at the silencer and go down. So this is a KGM Technologies R6 silencer. Um, I run silencers on bolt guns all the time. I don't like brakes. Um, I found with earmuffs and plugs, I still end up with a headache and uh, basically the concussion of those brakes, I just don't believe is healthy for me. And while I know it's a minor disadvantage, not worth it to me. The KGM R6 does what I think to be a pretty good job of being both a silencer and a muzzle brake. Um, it's definitely louder than a lot of other silencers on the market. Um, but it reduces recoil better than any silencer I've ever shot. And so to me, it's perfect for a match gun, that sort of thing. Uh, that's an Armageddon gear cover on it. The cover on a long range match is super important because as your silencer starts to get hot, you'll get mirage boiling off of it. And it makes it really hard to see your target. Um, it's a 24 inch, six Creedmoor M24 contour. 1 in 7 twist, um, running an Atlas bipod, really right stuff. Arca clamp, which is nice because I can slide it up and down this Masterpiece Arms chassis. This is a uh, Vortex Razor 4.5 to 27 
Gen 2 with the Horus H59 reticle. Uh, worked great. I run a lot of Vortex stuff. I like Vortex. I think their Gen 2 razors are a phenomenal scope. Um, that's about it for the rifle. There's other shooting gear uh, that I brought along. I'm going to get into my plate carrier and stuff like that later, kind of with the apparel side of things. Um, but I ran Oakley Tombstone glasses. This is what I've worn forever. I wear them all the time. Um, the only thing I've done with these is I bought the uh, little cables. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but it's like a little uh, wire so that they'll dangle on your neck because these are designed to be worn under ear pro. So if you don't have ear pro on, they tend to fall off. I like those MSA Sordom Supreme Pro X. Those, uh, everybody knows what those are. They're great ear pro. Um, so as far as my belt setup, I, uh, I wanted to have everything on the belt because you do a good amount of prone shooting, awkward positions, and when you start mounting stuff all over your chest and stomach, that just gets in the way. So I'll kind of start here and go around. Um, this is a uh, axle belt, uh, AXL. It's made out of this uh, fancy material. I can't remember what it's called now, uh, but I'll, I'll link to it in the comments. But it's kind of a carbon fiber or something or other, but it's super thin, really lightweight. Um, I needed a belt. This had a lot of good reviews. Uh, a lot of my friends used it, so I bought one. I like it. Got the job done. Um, here for the holster, I used a True North Concepts hanger. It's basically a uh, piece of aluminum that just drops your holster down a little bit. Um, I used Safari Land's QLS system so that I can swap holsters back and forth for my Shadow 2, my carry guns, that sort of thing. As far as the holster, I used this uh, Safari Land GLS which is a, essentially a universal holster. So it's designed to work with a variety of different handguns and it uses this little trigger system on the back. Um, I really wanted a retention holster for this match and a Shadow 2 with a dot, hard to find anything for one. Um, the holster worked, it is not my favorite. The gun wiggles a little bit. You can botch the draw kind of easily, um, but the holster's like 30 bucks, it got the job done. Um, so, you know, no real complaints there. Then uh, I just have some mag pouches. This is a little Blue Force gear, 10 speed I put in the front in case I needed it, never used it at the match. Uh, these are STAC Kiwis, uh, pistol mag pouches, and that held CZ Shadow 2 magazines with the Terran Tactical extensions. And then for my rifle, I got a Triad Tactical AI pouches. I like these because they have this retention here so they're not gonna fall out and you can adjust this bungee to different size mags. So for instance, this is a, a, tw or a 10 round mag with an extension to hold 14. It's the Masterpiece Arms extension. And you can just loosen up the bungee, it fits over that fine, but I could put a five rounder or 10 rounder in there too. Had two of those. Um, so that's kind of the supporting gear, and now we're gonna get into, I guess, the supporting, supporting gear. This is a Vortex Razor HD 4000 rangefinder, and a rangefinder was a must-have at this match. Uh, no ranges were given to you for any stage of the match, um, and we shot 16 stages, and we were responsible for lasing every target, every stage, that sort of thing. Um, Handheld rangefinder like this works great. Uh, range finding binoculars are even better. Uh, either way, one of the major keys is mount this on a tripod, uh, whether you have binoculars or a handheld like this. Um, mounting it on a uh, tripod will allow you to range much more precisely because when you're trying to hit a steel plate out at, let's say, 800 yards, you have what's called beam divergence. And basically, the laser beam coming out of this is spreading. And so, the more stable you can get, the more likely you are to read the target rather than the dirt in front of it or the trees behind it or something like that. So uh, when lasing targets, lays them multiple times, uh, you know, talk with your buddies, see what they're getting and uh, do it in the most stable way possible. If you can't do a tripod, you can take something like that game changer I talked about earlier, kind of set that and uh, get yourself nice and stable. So laser rangefinder, that's definitely a must have for these matches. All right, so here's some of the other gear I used in the match. Um, I'm gonna start with the Kestrel. Uh, this is the Kestrel 5700 Elite with applied ballistics and the link. Um, this is an amazing piece of technology. There's no other way to put it. I know they're expensive, I think six, $700. Um, but at this match, we shot out to 1,200 yards. Uh, we had two shots at 1,200. I hit both of them. 
um, the dope for this Kestrel was spot on. Now, uh, as they say in accounting, crap in, crap out. So when it comes to the Kestrel, you've got to make sure you put good data in. Uh, one thing that I always do is when I get to a match, this match was Saturday, Sunday, got there Friday, they have a zero range. I went out, I confirmed zero, I make sure my zero is perfect, and I chrono the gun again. I don't have that in the video, but I have a magneto speed chronograph. I chrono at every match and update my Kestrel. Um, as things, barrels do weird things. They change environmentals, change your velocity, that sort of thing. So the Kestrel is amazing, but make sure you're always putting good data into your Kestrel. So there's my dope pretty much covered. Um, I, came, I came to the match with all sorts of paper dope written down, everything from milling equations to you know what my drop was at different uh, density altitudes, that sort of thing. Um, didn't have to use any of that. The Kestrel worked great, but I always think paper backups a great thing to have. This is just an armband, Adidas. Uh, everybody makes these things. This is what I used on every stage of this match and really what I prefer. I have a Kestrel heads-up display, I have Picatinny mounted dope cards, all that kind of stuff, but I keep going back to the arm board because it lets me draw out a range card and um, it also has multiple pages so you can keep, you know, backup dope below it, that sort of thing. Um, this works great. You can get them for like 20 bucks, Academy. Don't buy one from Dix, buy one from Academy. They seem like cool people. Uh, as far as uh, support for the rifle goes, so here's what I used in the match, these three devices. So I'll start, this is a Armageddon Gear Schmedium Game Changer with the heavy fill. And this is the waxed, uh, like waxed canvas, I think they call it, which I find is a little more sticky. Uh, this bag's really heavy, probably like 13, 14 pounds. Um, but I love this bag, it goes great. Um, if you're shooting off of like gates, rails, all that kind of thing, um, you can also use it as a rear bag. It's what I use as a rear bag. I find it works great for that. Um, next up is the Grayop CNC plate. Uh, this thing is awesome. It attaches to the Arca uh, rail on the bottom of your MPA chassis and basically gives you this wider platform to shoot off of which of course increases your stability significantly. Now you can use it different ways. One way is with the game changer. You can have this on the gun, game changer, and then you just plop your whole rifle down on there. I did that, for instance, we shot out um, the uh, back of a, uh, back of a uh, car, and we had kind of the car door, and I slapped my game changer down there, put the plate on it, I think that was just perfect. Um, you can also run it with this bag. This is also Armageddon gear, but it's designed for the Gray Ops plate. So it basically connects with these little straps. Now you have one unit. This is great, for instance, we had a stage where we shot off stairs. So it's five, four, three, two, one, shoot two, move, shoot two, move, shoot two. And uh, before that, you had to do this heavy farmer's carry. So a lot of people are running into time constraints there. A lot of people are running a bipod with a rear bag, but the bipod was just a little too wide. The stairs were slick, they were wet, bipod was sliding around. So I put this on the gun, take your two shots. All I did gotta do is pick up one thing, plop down, boom, I'm back on the target. Um, so this gray ops plate is uh, worth its weight in gold. And I say that because it's very expensive. Um, I wanna say you're close to 300 bucks by the time you buy the plate and this bag. Um, the plate does typically have brass weights in it. I took those out because I brought this with me on the long movement, didn't want those heavy weights. Um, but great piece of gear. Now, speaking of the long movement, carrying your rifle, people did it all sorts of different ways. I saw guys with your typical like blue force gear, two point sling. There was guys with elderly stock sticking the rifle in the back, guys carrying the gun over their shoulder like they're at a you know trap shooting competition. Um, I kind of went a little crazy and bought this uh, tab gear biathlon sling, which was awesome. It uh. It carries my rifle. My rifle weighs around 20 pounds. It's heavy. So this biathlon sling basically goes over your shoulder like so, and then the rifle just hangs vertically right behind you. Um, I'll probably throw a picture in here of it or something like that because it looks a little funky. But uh, this sling, once again, it's expensive. Pretty much everything precision rifle is expensive. I don't know if I've found anything that's cheap yet. Um, I think I paid around 200 bucks for this sling, but I mean, it's nice. It's got cover buckles all that kind of jazz, but this was awesome for carrying the gun. On the long, long movement, I ran the whole time, and uh, in my practice, I've been running up, uh, up in the National Forest a lot with this, and 
hearing that big heavy gun, it does it well. It's comfortable. Um, it's a great piece of kit. Now, as far as uh, the basically stages where we could drive around, that sort of thing, I brought a tripod. I did not bring a tripod on the long movement, and uh, I don't think it was necessary. Uh, but I have this Vortex carbon fiber tripod. It's great. I got this little, as you can't tell by now, I really like Armageddon gear. Uh, I'm a Georgian. They're a Georgian. They make good stuff. This is their uh, tripod sling. Uh, but this Vortex tripod we used on every stage for spotting. I uh, have this Vortex Razor spotting scope. And how this match worked is you spotted for your teammates, um, which, uh, which really worked out pretty well for the match. Um, but of course, everybody loved this spotting scope. It was nicer than a lot of the other spotting scopes around. And um, being on a good solid tripod like this made it really easy to spot call hits, that kind of thing. Um, once again, I didn't bring any of this on the long movement. I just brought it to the match. I bring it to all matches. It's nice to have a good spotting scope. Um, you can see trace, that sort of thing pretty well. This does have a uh, mill reticle in it too, so I find that beneficial um, for milling targets, uh, calculating mover speed, that kind of thing. Uh, ammo, pretty simple. As I mentioned, I'm shooting six Creedmoor. I shot Hornady's uh, factory match. It's the 108 ELDM. Shot great, great stuff. I don't reload rifle. I don't have the patience for it. I don't think I'm a good enough shooter that would really help me at this point. Pistol ammo, I do reload. I just shot basic nine mil. It's a 124 grain from Precision Delta. Nothing special there. Now, All right, so here's kind of the last pieces of gear. For the tactical games, you're required to wear a plate carrier. Guys have to be 15 pounds slick, meaning that if you have mags and stuff like that, that doesn't count towards your weight. Ladies, I think is 12 or 13 pounds. I'm not sure. Um, I went with a Velocity Systems Scarab plate carrier. Uh, I've never been in the military or a cop or anything like that, so haven't done much body armor wearing. Uh, but decided I would get some real armor for the match. Um, didn't totally know, you know, a lot of options out there, but fortunately I have some good friends that wear this kind of stuff for a living. So I reached out to them. A lot of people said the Velocity System Scarab is the way to go. Uh, so I bought a Velocity System Scarab with their multi-threat plates. Um, it worked great. It's very comfortable. Um, I've done as long as a five mile run wearing this and yeah, that added weight stinks, but it's pretty dang comfortable. It doesn't destroy your traps, that sort of thing. Um, worth noting that their plates and their carrier, I was at like 14 and a half pounds, so I had to throw a few weights in here to get me up to that 15 pound requirement. Um, another thing worth kind of touching on is shoes. Um, for this match, I mean, the long movement was 1.7 miles, so I don't think it really mattered that much. Um, but I am uh, in the process of training for Mammoth Sniper Challenge. That's in January. We'll have to run 35 miles. So I've been kind of doing some research, investigating different shoe types, because obviously long rucking, that's important. And um, what uh, I've typically always worn some form of a Solomon shoe boot. Uh, unfortunately, I found their QC's gone downhill, so that got me looking at other options. And a lot of people are telling me, you know, you don't want to wear Gore-Tex all the time, only if you know you're getting wet. And so I started looking to what do the military guys wear when they go to these things like ranger school where they're rucking and rucking and, you know, running with packs and body armor and all that. And I found uh, this kind of style of boot. So I guess you'd call this like a combat boot. Um, this is made by McCray Footwear. Uh, one of the main reasons I went for them is they're USA made. So these boots are completely made here in the U.S., which seems to be rare for, well, anything these days. But um, anyway, these boots were great. Like I said, I ran the whole uh, long movement, 1.7 miles, wore these, they were great. Um, the only other noticeable, notable piece of clothing was I wore a sun hoodie shirt like this. Um, that thing was uh, very nice. We were in Alabama, it was really hot. And you know, of course you're fighting dehydration and trying to keep your energy up across the whole day of these matches. So the less your body you expose to the sun, the better. So that's why I went with that. Um, and then the last thing, this is how I carried my gear on the long movement. I got this idea from a guy named Sean Murphy. He is a world national champion, whatever you wanna call him, phenomenal shooter. He wins pretty much all the running guns and all the team matches with a partner he always shoots with. And he mentioned using one of these Kavu packs for a running gun. 
Um, because as you're between stages, you can just pull it across like this and dig in here, plus up mags, reload stuff, that kind of thing. Uh, this works super well. It was, um, like I said, maybe it's a purse, but I don't know. I liked it. It worked well. So that's my experience at the Alabama Tactical Games Sniper Challenge. Uh, if you have any questions, you can comment here on YouTube or hit me up Instagram, Facebook, any of those things. Uh, if you're watching this, you probably know how to find me. Happy to further expand on anything that I can for you so that I can help you perform well at these kind of matches because that's kind of why I want to do this is so that I can help others because um, I know I always appreciate when people help me. So there we go.